Well, uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Pukar Tamang and I am from History Department. Today I will be discussing the topic from Chapter 9 that is Feudal Polity, Society and Economy in Europe from 8th to 14th century. This topic is of second semester that is uh, CC4. My lecture covers two units that is a uh, Germanic setup and feudal polity, society and economy in Europe from 8th to 14th century. So before discussing the Germanic setup in different parts of Roman Empire, let us know who these uh, Germanic tribes were. Germanic tribes also termed as barbarians were the tribes of Indo-European linguistic family who were largely inhabited in the northern and the south uh, central uh, Europe. So these Germanic tribes such as Chimbri, Teutons and Ambroiana mainly concentrated themselves in the region east of Rhine and north of Danube. So this area is referred to as principal Germanic zone by modern day scholar and Germania by the Romans. By the time of Augustus Caesar, these tribes had become the tribal periphery of the Roman world in Central and Western Europe. So the term Germanic originated in classical times when groups of, tri uh, when groups of the tribals living in Lower, Upper and Greater Germany were referred by the Romans. Now, uh, let us discuss about the Germanic setup in different parts of Roman Empire. As we know, that is the decline of the Western Roman Empire was a slow, gradual process. Since the middle of the 3rd century AD, several causes had been at work to undermine its vitality and towards the third quarter of 5th century, this stumbling empire surrendered to the barbarians invasions. Thus the invasion of the Germanic tribes or barbarians gave a severe blow to the Western Roman Empire which led to its downfall. However, there are other factors too which are responsible for the downfall of the Western Roman Empire in this context, uh, we can mention some of the causes like civil war, uh, economic crisis, social crisis, fiscal crisis and others. But uh, we cannot ignore the fact that the tribal invasions, especially of Germanic tribes, shook the very foundation of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century CE. So these invasions uh, resulted in penetrations of these tribes with the purpose of acquisitions of the Roman territories, uh, which was viable only from the mid third century CE. These German tribes in their initial stage had been practicing primitive agricultural system uh, where the concept of private ownership of land was actually unknown. In this tribal society or state formations, they did not even witness any kind of social differentiation. But in course of time, when these tribes came in, contact, uh, came in uh, trade contact with the Romans, in, it induced both social differentiation and rudimentary state of formation among the tribes. Thus, uh, gradually, the way for elected chiefs and a rudimentary kingship developed among the tribes. The warrior class around the kings assumed the status of nobility and acquired more land as a result of wars as the kings were engaged for the territorial expansion for more resources. And the German peasants, uh, they assumed the same status of colony. Thus, analyzing all this development, it can be said that the initial contact between the Roman society and the Germanic tribes had a profound impact on the tribal society, which paved the way for the Germanic setup in course of time. 
It is to be uh, noted that the internal weaknesses of the Western Roman Empire resulted in the acquisition of Roman territories by various Germanic uh, tribes in the 5th century CE. So these subsequently led to the establishment of Germanic states with the, within the area of the erstwhile Roman Empire. The acquisitions of Roman territories not only led to the establishment of the Germanic states but at the same time it also paved the way for the interaction of these states with the Roman institutions. And these interactions can be studied uh, in two phases that is under the founder states and under the succession states. So uh, here the founder states uh, means the early German states which were established uh, during 406 CE and remained till 480 CE in different parts of Roman Empire. So among these states, the most important were Vandals uh, at a place called Tunis in North Africa, the Vesicots at Tulsa in Spain, the Burgundian at Seboy in Middle Rhine, and the Ostrogoths in especially in the northern part of Italy. So as these states could not provide an effective administrative uh, systems in their acquired lands, they continued with the existing Roman political, legal and economic structure to continue their rule in the region. So in order to continue their administrative system uh, in the acquired land, they also followed the system of hospitalitas. So now uh, the questions came, what is hospitalitas? So actually, it actually means the Roman legal device originally entailing the quartering of Roman troops in rural agricultural areas during the winter to provide them with provisions. So it was modified after 420 CE and was used to legalize Germanic residents in Gaul, Iberia and to provide them with access to a person, person of agricultural production. Thus under the systems of hospitalitas, the Roman landowners had to share their landed state with Germanic tribal leaders. According to Perry Anderson, under the system of hospitalitas, the Roman aristocracy had to surrender two-third of their land in Spain and one-third of their land in Italy to the Germanic tribes. As the social differentiations had already developed in the tribal uh, society, the influential members enjoyed more lands and on these lands the existing Roman state system was followed. So at the beginning, the Germanic states represented dualism in the political structure. The system of dualism literally means that during the period a Germanic king was assisted by the military nobility on the one side and on the other hand a Roman community retained its own administrative structure with its functionaries. Simply uh, it can be understood that the founder states continued to follow the existing Roman political system which is familiar to the Roman community. So in the legal sphere also, this type of dualism was witnessed as Germanic laws were applied to the tribal societies uh, while Roman law and judicial uh, institutions uh, served the existing Roman communities. So that means uh, there are two types of law serving two different communities during the time of the Germanic states. This type of dualism was also visible in ideological field as many tribesmen adopted Christianity 
while others continued with their tribal religious practices. Perry Anderson opines that the conversion to Christianity was not due to the efforts of the uh, missionaries of the Catholic Church of Rome but was an outcome of the acceptance of a wider divine order that is Christianity to establish a territorial state system on the part of the Germanic kings. Thus, it can be said that under the founder states, the economic, political and ideological impact on Rome was very limited as these states continued with some of the Roman customs and practices though in a modified form. It was only under the successor states that the real changes occurred. The most important successor state of the period among them were Visigoths in Spain, Lombards in Italy, Anglo-Saxons in England and Franks in Gaul. The period of successor states roughly estimated between the later half of the 5th century CE and mid 10th century CE. Under the successor states, the fusion between uh, the Roman and the German institutions led to the drastic changes in the field of political, social and economic structure. Talking about the political activities of the successor states in an attempt to the Germanic setup in the different parts of Roman Empire, we can take the examples of Visigoths. The Visigoths, one of the powerful Germanic tribes, invaded Roman Empire in the 5th century CE and established a separate state in Spain in 418 CE. To provide a stable government in the region, Visigoths followed the Roman systems of institutions but later she was forced to find a new solution for governance. The innovative administrative system followed by the Visigoths was to give administrative uh, responsibilities to the Germanic chief, big land owners and the military leaders to control the law and order in the regions. So these gradually evolved into a hierarchical system of service and protection. The change which continued up until the village level paved the way for the development of the feudal ties. Thus, Mark Bloch is of the opinion that this paved the way for uh, uh, this uh, type of hierarchical structure first developed in Spain under the Visigoths and then spread to other parts of Western Europe. So another Germanic tribes uh, that is Lombard who invaded northern Italy in 568 CE witnessed a new political and economic system. 